You're pregnant, congratulations. Do you know what you can do or what you should start doing now that you're pregnant? This video gives you 10 tips on what to do now that you're pregnant. And go ahead and hit subscribe and click the bell so that you don't mix the next two videos in this three-part series of the do's and don'ts in pregnancy. Brought to you by me. Hi, I'm Haley. I'm a labor and delivery nurse, childbirth educator, certified breastfeeding counselor, doula, and mom of two. Welcome to Pregnancy, Birth, and Parenting 101, educating and supporting you one video at a time. Before we get started, I want to give you a virtual pat on the back for educating yourself so you, a smart and capable woman, can make educated decisions for yourself and your baby. Way to go, mama. So let's get into those 10 tips. Tip number one, stay active. Unless you're doing like dodgeball or basketball or any contact sports, you can continue with your current physical regimen that you're doing. And if you're not at all physically active, Take a 20 minute brisk walk a day or consider starting to do some yoga. Um, <laughs> make sure that you are checking out some YouTube yoga channels as well as yoga apps on your phone that offer free classes. And once you hit that second trimester, unless you're a yogi and you've been doing this for a really long time and you know what to avoid, make sure that you stick with prenatal yoga. Okay? Um, another thing you want to do to stay active is keep your pelvic floor active. So you may be asking like, what's my pelvic floor? And specifically, I mean your pelvic um, floor muscles. And what those are is it's what you use. If you have to pee really bad and you can't make it to the bathroom right away, you're gonna clench, right? It's those muscles that you're clenching, that's your pelvic flo um, floor muscles. And then the exercises you do to help strengthen those are called Kegels. I will be doing a full video on Kegels, so stay tuned for those exercises. Um, but until then, feel free to Google what Kegels are so that you have a better understanding. Um, tip number two would be see a psychologist uh, that specializes in the perinatal uh, period or a therapist that specializes in the perinatal period. And if you're not sure you know, um, what ones do, just take your insurance card, look on the back, call that number, have them send you a list of providers in your area that do specialize in the perinatal um, period. So I say these numbers not to scare you, but more to make you aware. One in seven pregnant women will suffer from uh, anxiety or depression, and one in four uh, women postpartum will suffer from those as well. So it's a lot easier to follow up with someone or to reach out uh, to your therapist after you've had baby if you've already established contact with them during pregnancy. And they can also look for those signs and symptoms of postpartum depression um, or anxiety and you know get them before they get uh, before they progress too much. So definitely start seeing a perinatal psychologist. Tip number three uh, let's talk about vitamins for a second. So I want to talk about the difference between folate and folic acid. So folate is naturally occurring in your food that you eat. So like avocados, lentils, uh, greasy lean vegetables, or green leafy vegetables, um, cantaloupe, and oranges. And there's a whole list of them. So you can Google what foods have folate in it, and it's actually a derivative of the B vitamin. So that occurs naturally. A lot of us don't get enough though, and so what they started doing is fortifying cereals, prenatal vitamins with folic acid that is man-made. So you wanna make sure that your prenatal vitamin has at least 400 micrograms of folic acid. That way you're covered. Whether you're getting it in your diet or not, at least you'll be covered. And then if you live in an area that um, you don't get direct sunlight for at least 20 minutes a day, consider taking a vitamin D supplement to help reduce your risk of depression, among other things. And speaking of vitamin D, uh, that brings me to number four. Uh, the fourth tip is have sex. That's right, I said it, have sex. And studies show that two, um, that women that have sex two to three times a week 
have lower incidences of nausea, insomnia, and decrease their risk of anxiety and depression. So finish this movie, finish this video, and then grab your partner and go enjoy yourself. <laughs> Uh, something a little less enjoyable would be tip number five, and that is if you are pregnant during flu season, get your flu shot. The risks of getting your flu shot are significantly lower than the risks and complications to you and your baby if you get, actually get the flu. So get your flu shot unless you're allergic, in which case please don't get your flu shot, um, but avoid people who are sick and wash your hands a lot. And tip number six, let's talk hair and nails for a second. I don't know about you guys, but when I was pregnant, I was tired a lot of the time and having my hair done and my nails done were two ways that just gave me a little boost and made me feel good and made me feel pampered. And God knows I loved the foot massages for the pedicures. So if you're like me and you wanna keep getting your hair and your nails done, don't worry about, you know, that monthly visit to the salon or that weekly visit to the nail salon doesn't carry enough risk to have any negative effects on your growing baby. So indulge, get pampered, continue living your life, right? Um, step number seven is go see the dentist. The American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology recommends that you maintain your scheduled routine dental visits. So good oral health leads to good overall health. So call your dentist today. I think I need to too. I'm gonna to do that after this video and make an appointment. Um, yeah, so call your dentist. Number eight, tip number eight would be to hydrate. All right, you need to be drinking at least, at the very least, 10 cups of water a day. Your body needs water for all of its bodily um, functions like pooping for instance which was going to be a celebratory event thanks to that lovely side effect of pregnancy called constipation but it's not just for your body it's also for your growing baby there's been a correlation with how much water mom drinks and the amount of fluid that baby is floating around in so make sure you're getting your 10 glasses of water a day number nine tip number nine is going to be wear your seat belt all right because the damage that the seatbelt is gonna do, I promise you, is significantly less than you flying through the windshield. So the recommendation is to keep wearing your seatbelt, you know, right below your belly. As your belly grows, it's just gonna stay right below there, okay? Right at like your pant line. And then my last tip is gonna be kick counts. What do I mean by that? So you wanna start noticing your baby's movements around 24 weeks. Once you hit 24 weeks, you should be conscious of your baby moving. You wanna feel about 10 movements, 10 kicks an hour. If you haven't felt your baby move in a while, drink some ice cold water, lay on your left side, and just wait, wait for about half an hour or so. If you still haven't felt anything at all, call your provider. They may want you to come in and just do a quick ultrasound to verify that everything is okay. But that is one way that you can be conscious and make sure that everything is going as it should be, is those 10 movements per hour. Um, all right, guys, that is it for today's video. I hope it was helpful for you. If it was, share with a friend. And remember, subscribe and click the bell so that you don't miss part two and part three of the do's and don'ts of pregnancy. Catch me on Instagram uh, at Naples Birth Services or on my personal one at Haley Saunders. And if you are looking for support or education in the Southwest Florida region, hook me up, not hook me up, let me hook you up. Look me up at naplesbirthservices.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. And remember, you got this. <music>